Okay, y'all. I want you to take a second and listen to what my guy here, Base Forge, is talking about. He's almost right. It's so close. It's just, just listen. Just listen. Watch. But stay tuned to the end to hear all the physics and explanation as to how it actually works with some animations and everything. This is Borobudur. It is in Indonesia. I always thought this temple was super weird because it's perfectly geometric except for the circles in the middle of the temple. They're like, they're not quite perfect. My last video, I showed you the simulation of the Kladni patterns. If you put sand on a plate and you play sound through it, it creates geometric shapes. But if you freeze the simulation right here, yep, it's perfect. They're not perfect circles because of the frequency. Each of the bells is a focal point for the frequency. That's why those circles are not perfect. Borobudur itself is a giant bell. It's, there's nothing inside of it. The temple, you can't go in there. There's no chambers. Built on top of a mound. It should be quite obvious now that this is used to focus on it. It has a resonance. It focuses light on a volcanically active fault line on the planet. There are no records of its construction, and nobody knows why it was ever abandoned. What do you think it was for? Maybe we should talk to the monks instead of Wikipedia. And as a physicist and self-proclaimed agnostic monk, my guy, you're so close. It's, it's not a bell. It's a damper. It's an acoustic damper. It's just like how on a muffler we use Helmholtz resonators. They allow for the frequencies that they resonate at to be absorbed or attenuated and or dampened out and or reversed or canceled out by interference with the continuous wave. What those temples are for are for damping out all the mechanical vibrations and acoustics that go into the ground that could lead to earthquakes, volcanoes, all of the calamities that our vibrations putting into the ground from the li our lives and all the things we do would add up to keep resonating the earth. And if we don't have acoustic and mechanical vibration dampers and or canceling effects or canceling temples, those vibrations will continue to add up and will continue to cause problems. And to be clear, this operates exactly how a magnifying transmitter would work on the surface of the earth with different frequencies or band spectrums of electric currents coming through the ground. Only specific ones that are at resonant with the coil and the capacitance top of the magnifying transmitter will be able to go up into the actual magnifying transmitter and be able to draw power from. If it's not at the resonant frequency, it won't pass through. This is what a band pass or a high pass or low pass filter is. And as you can see, when we look at the side profile of this temple, you can see all the, what we were calling bells are actually Helmholtz resonators for all the vibrations in the ground. And that's why they're not empty. They're, they have to be solid because the ground vibrations will travel up into it if it's solid and there won't be a change in index or refraction as it goes from one medium into like an air pocket. So it being solid makes it a part of the ground resonator. And now personally, I'm pretty sure that the reason there's so many layers for the different eras are for how they needed to dampen out the earth for the different societies that have existed in time. Each society had different vibrations according to the way they arranged themselves, the way they did their industry, the way they, they traveled, the way they danced, the way they did their festivals, everything at every generation or every uh, epoch, you would have a, you would need a different kind of damper. So that's why it would have to be changed. And I think that's what's coming. I think we need to figure out how to do what we need to do for this with our lands today, because we put different vibrations in the ground than our ancestors. And we need to figure out how to dampen the ones that we put into the ground. Now, it's not a coincidence that you had just said, Base Forge, that this is located on a volcanic fault line. Why would you put it there? Because you need to dampen out any of the vibrations from our society that are might contribute to that fault line having other problems. And now, if you rotate your screen, you'll be able to watch the rest of this. Let's dive into a simple yet powerful physics analogy to further grasp this concept. Imagine two balloons filled with air connected by a hose. Each balloon represents a reservoir of electrical charge, and the hose represents the single wire in Tesla's system. When we squeeze one balloon, the air flows through the hose and inflates the other balloon, similar to how electrical charges are conducted from a higher potential to a lower potential. When the squeeze balloon is released, the other balloon starts to discharge the air back through the hose. This back and forth movement of air is akin to the alternating 
current flow of charges in Tesla's single wire system. This alternating oscillation continues until all energy is dissipated due to factors like ohmic energy loss in an electrical circuit due to resistance and impedances. But how does this oscillation actually perform work in a practical setting? The oscillation is, in essence, a cyclic movement of potential energy to and from a mechanical system, creating a repetitive action that can be harnessed for the efficient transmission of significant power to perform real actionable work. The upper terminal of Tesla's magnifying transmitter, often seen as a mysterious component, actually plays a significant role in the system's efficiency. Think of it as a large capacitor or a reservoir for electrical charges to be stored into. When the system is activated, charges surge upwards into this terminal, similar to how air fills up a balloon in our previous analogy. Instead of letting these charges dissipate into the atmosphere through arcing or other wasteful processes, the upper terminal conserves them, allowing them to bounce back towards the ground. It's akin to the return discharging of air in our balloon analogy after the enlarged second balloon releases its air back through the hose after the squeezed balloon is released. The charges reverse their course and flow back the way they came, oscillating one completing cycle. This is how the upper terminal acts like a spring in its function as a giant capacitor and charge reservoir. It conserves and recycles the system's potential energy rather than losing it. By eliminating arcing from the upper terminal and reducing electromagnetic radiation, Tesla made a significant leap in the transmitter's efficiency and capability of converting the input energy into electrical energy conducted into the ground. In other words, having an upper terminal that's arcing off into the air would be analogous to the balloons having holes in them, losing potential energy as the air rushes out each time the balloons fill up. This dampens the power signal bounced back into the ground. In a similar vein, when the frequency of squeezing the balloons increases, there are eventual losses from the rapid back and forth movement of air surrounding the balloons. The acoustic waves produced by the balloon's surface can be likened to a damping of the power signal. Applying this to Tesla's magnifying transmitter, as the frequency escalates, more oscillating electromagnetic EM energy dissipates into the air from the upper terminal. This results in analogous damping of the input power signal intended for conduction into the ground. Tesla himself even stated that the magnifying transmitter, if so desired, could be designed to emit 95% of the input energy from the upper terminal as EM radiation and direct only 5% as currents into the ground. Though he explicitly claimed this to be the naive struggles of the radio men. You can't pack sufficient energy in your radio wave to do anything we need to do mechanically. Conversely, Tesla explained that his more favorable approach was to design it to emit only 5% of the input as EM radiation and therefore channel the remaining 95% of the input into UHVAC straight into the ground. Serendipitously, this demonstrates the transmitter's dual capability, wireless radio wave communication through the air in addition to non-interference mechanisms for the in-ground power signal transmission and transmitting information frequency bandwidths. This also clears a common misconception that the return for the circuit is through the air. The function of the upper terminal in conserving and discharging the charges back into the ground effectively dispels this notion. This action can be seen as being analogous to an oscillating mass on a spring, but for the electrical charges. The concept of the upper terminal in Tesla's wireless power transmission system can be analogized with the operation of a Helmholtz resonator in acoustics. Just as a Helmholtz resonator, commonly found in automobile muffler systems, interacts with acoustic waves by damping out specific frequencies while allowing others to pass through, Tesla's upper terminal does something analogous. It acts as a reservoir resonator for electrical charges, carefully tuned to respond to certain frequencies. The tuning of Tesla's wireless receiver, specifically the capacitance of the upper terminal and the inductance of the secondary coil is crucial for its proper functioning. These components create a resonant circuit that determines which power signal frequencies will be allowed through and which will be filtered out. Just as in an acoustic system, where the resonator permits only a specific frequency to resonate, in Tesla's design only the electrical frequencies that match the resonant frequency of the receiver's circuit will be allowed to pass through the secondary coil, causing a movement of charges oscillating within the circuit. All other frequencies will be filtered out, effectively preventing them from inducing a current in the secondary coil. The upper terminal and secondary coil's CL resonant circuit must be tuned appropriately to absorb the back and forth movement of the charges at the transmitted frequency so that it minimizes any damping of the wave and hence conserving energy. This conservation is crucial as any deviation from the tuned frequency would result in energy losses. The core of this idea is that unless the receiver is tuned precisely to the transmitting frequency, it won't receive power efficiently. 